All right, guys, let's examine uh, chapter five in our book uh, that looks at probability. Now, first we have to define probability. It's a chance outcome in the long run. This is called the law of large numbers. Then if we look at the formula sheet, this is what you're gonna get on your AP test. That second formula is conditional probability. We'll get to the first one in just a moment. Always make sure you divide out the given condition. Now let's look at the difference between and and or. And in a problem is when you're gonna multiply. You might see the word both, or you might see the word also, but that's meaning you're going to multiply. Or is when we add in probability, and that's the first formula on your formula sheet. Make sure you subtract off the probability that both things happen, because that is gonna be counted twice when you add probability of A plus the probability of B. Now moving on, we look at what it means for two events to be mutually exclusive. I'm gonna use a Venn diagram to go over this. Mutually exclusive means both events, A and B, cannot happen at the same time. In the Venn diagram, that means there's no intersection. And lastly, we have independent events, meaning one event happening is not impacted by another event happening. This can be confirmed with conditional probability. The probability of A happening given B happens if the events are independent means that the probability is just A. B is not going to impact the probability that A happens. Another way to look at it is to use multiplication. If the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B, you have independent events. Now we're gonna make a tree diagram. If we look at this problem of an employer that tests their prospective employees to see if they use drugs, we know that 4% use drugs. That means 96% don't use drugs. Okay, from those that use drugs, we're told that a certain percentage of them get a positive test result when tested for drugs, okay? Now, just because you're using drugs, you could still get a negative test result. There's a 10% chance that that happens. Now, of those that don't use drugs, still 5% show test positive for drugs. That's a false positive, which means 95% are, that are not using drugs do get a negative test result. That, that would be a true test result. So we can find the, the probability of all of these outcomes by just using multiplication. These are conditional probabilities with the second branch. And when we multiply all four of these outcomes together, we need to check to make sure they do in fact add up to one, which they do. Now let's look at a specific problem. So what is the probability that a prospective employer will test positive for drugs. Now there's two ways this could happen. If you go back to your tree diagram, you'll see that you could have a true positive where you're using drugs and you test positive, or remember or means to, to, to add, or you don't use drugs and you still get a positive. Okay, so we need to look at those two scenarios and then we can add those probabilities together to get our total answer of the probability of testing positive, which is about 8.4%. 8.4% of the people test positive. Now, suppose an employer has 20 prospective employees. What is the probability that at least one will test positive for drugs? It's really important that we use the probability from our last um, answer so we're looking at the probability of at least one. Use the complement. That would be one minus the probability that no one tests positive. When you see that word at least, you need to remember to use the complement. The probability that you test positive, remember last problem was 8.4%. So that means the probability you test negative is 91.6%. Again, we're using that complement. Remember, we're looking at the probability that none test positive. That means all 20 people are negative, okay? So we can take one minus 0.916 to the 20th power. This is using the assumption that each person is independent of the next. And we get a final answer of 82% chance that at least one person tests positive. Moving right along, now suppose prospective employees 
uh, a prospective employee does in fact test positive for drugs, what's the probability they're actually using drugs? Remember, just because you test positive doesn't mean you are actually using. There are false positives in this scenario. But this is conditional probability. Always divide out by that given condition. The given, the known, the true statement here was that they did test positive. So we take 0 0.036 and divide that by 0 0.084. Remember this formula is on your formula sheet and we get a 42.86% chance a prospective employee uses drugs given they test positive for drugs. Only 42.86% chance, it's probably a bad test.